Hey, 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 it's Grips, and as always, thanks for joining me. So today I'm going to show you how to use the new chroma key filter, and I'm going to show you how to use the new drop shadow filter. As you can see, it's creating quite a cool effect on me, casting a shadow on the background, and you can add this filter to anything, even crazy stuff like this. So as you can see, that's a pretty cool effect. So follow me, and I will show you how to do that and more. Now, as you may know, the key to good green screen is your lighting. Poor lighting will give you poor results. So lighting is definitely the key. Now, what would happen if you couldn't get good lighting? And that's what we are going to do today. So let's bring our clip into the overlay track and let's have a look at the clip. So here I am in front of a green screen. Now, what I did, I turned off the backlighting. Normally, I got these two lights here and that light up the backlight. So I've, I've created the shadow and you can see that the green in the background is pretty dark. So I'm going to have problems after I pull the green screen. So let's do that anyway. Let's go to mask and chroma key and apply it to the overlay and make sure I select the green. Now, just looking at this, it looks pretty good, but let's have a look what really what's really going on behind the scenes. So I'm going to grab a white background and that will really demonstrate what's going on. So there you go. So you can see that in actuality, I'm still having major problems on the green screen behind me and I'm probably going to get some artifacting through, you know, my, my body as well. Now, if I was to get another background clip of whatever it is, I'm going to see all these weird effects. So this is where my body was casting a shadow on the green screen. So let's grab the chroma key filter from New Blue and see what we can do with it. So again, let's go into New Blue Essentials 2 and here's the chroma key filter and place it onto our overlay track. Double click, mask and chroma key and customs filter. Did I just say mask and chroma key? Boy, oh boy. I meant to say customs filter. All right, so here we go. Now, this is very simple. What it does, it makes everything stand out so you can really see the issues here. These are all problems on your green screen. So what we can do is look into a matte view. So we check show mask, and now we can't see anything. So we start playing with the sensitivity control. So we're gonna slowly increase that until we start to see our picture come back. There we go, now it's coming back, here we go. So you can see now, it's uh, the background is a lot clearer, but the subject is also speckled. So I already know this to be exactly 77. So I'm gonna enter that value and there you go. Now it looks really, really clean. I've got a very sharp black image of the subject and the white is very clean looking. So if I was to uncheck the mask, I see no artifacting now in the background. And that's what the chroma key filter does. I can also use the color range. So I can tweak the color range because as you saw before, I had a darker green here caused by the shadow. So I can start tweaking this as well and adjust it up or down. But as you can see, I don't need to do that here. And I'll explain these ones in a minute. So what I'm gonna do now is just control C. Um, I'm gonna delete that keyframe and I'm gonna go control V. So it's all even across the timeline and press OK. And there you go. Look at that. There's no funny business going on in the background now. Now all I need to do is obviously trim the sides. So let's just do that quickly. And then just bring that right in. There you go, my friends. That's how easy it is using the chroma key filter. Now for those who don't have the chroma key filter, there is another way of doing this, with, uh, another way of fixing this up. And I'll show you that very quickly. Let's uncheck the chroma key. So we, we got the problem back and let's go to mask and chroma key and you'll see this new option here and this basically blends the overlays and watch what happens when I start decreasing the tolerance. Look at that. Now I'm slowly also getting rid of the problem at the background. Ta -da. And again, I've created a pretty nice looking green screen. Very clean, very clean. So I can use both and make sure I've got a really, really nice sharp effect. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on to the drop shadow. So let's go have a look at the drop shadow. Uh, I think that's in new blue essential four. There you go, drop shadow. Now, this is a little bit weird. I cannot use the drop shadow without the chroma key filter. And I'll explain to you why. But first, let's, let's show you what I mean. I can't, let's uncheck this and drop in the, the, the drop shadow. 
Now you can see nothing happened. Now if I place an object on the screen, it will create the shadow, but it doesn't create the shadow of the subject. And, that, and I'll show you why that is. I'm gonna turn back the chroma key and you'll see now it comes. All right, let's go into the, the chroma key and see what's happening. All right, the, in order for the drop shadow to work, it must work of an outline. Now when you do the mask and chroma key, you're not actually creating an outline. The outline is the entire clip, as you can see here. I'll exaggerate that just so you can see what's going on. Oh, I can't do it here. <laughs> I have to go back in the drop shadow. But I'll show you in a minute. Now, this is what these controls do. I'm going to now shrink. So I'm going to shrink this, say, by about 5 pixels. And I'm going to soften the edges. It's probably about 3, three pixels. All right, don't worry about this. I'm going to clean that all up. So I'm, I don't have a really sharp edge anymore. If I, if I bump this right up... You can, and if I go in the mask and chroma key, you can see that I've got a really soft edge now, right? But that's not what we're after. We want to do everything subtle. All right, so and again, control C. This is the only part that's annoying with these filters. I have to do, do it like this. And then control V. Okay. And then press OK. All right, so now what we need to do is go into the drop shadow and then start tweaking that. So here we go. So let's go right in the beginning. So uh, remember I said to you, it needs an outline. So the original clip, because I, because I shrunk the clip, the outline is actually here. So what, what, watch what happens if I increase the offset. See how it's now increasing that line as well. But you can see the drop shadow is coming up nicely. Now, in case this happens, don't use the cropping of the mask and chroma key. Use a crop filter and then you won't have this problem. Now I'm just going to tweak it down slightly, make it a bit blurry, so it doesn't look so well, opacity, sorry, so it doesn't look so black. And I'm going to press Control C, and then again Control V, and then OK. So all I need to do now is just shrink it a little bit more. So again, mask and chroma key, and then just bring that in slightly more. There you go. Now you can see I've got a bit of an outline here, so it's a little bit too much, and that's caused by the tolerance level here. So I'm going to decrease that tolerance level slightly, and as you can see, it comes in really, really sharp. And there you go, my friends. That is how you use the drop shadow. Now, like I said, if you just place an object in here, you don't need to add the chroma key. But to do the drop shadow on the subject, you must add the chroma key filter because you need to create the outline on the subject. So I hope, and I hope I've uh, got everybody uh, <laughs> well informed on how to use these new plugins. And if not, just leave a comment in the section below. And as always, thanks for watching.